Hello everyone, Kirith here, and in this video I'm going to give you all the tips you need to drive in Gran Turismo 7 in the wet. Gran Turismo 7 in the wet is for me one of the best bits about the game, full stop. And I have so much experience in real life of driving in my karting championship in the wet on slick tyres. I've driven with Super GT, Jimmy Broadbent, and some of the fastest drivers in the country in wet conditions I believe. And I'm going to relay all of those tips to you, give you all the secrets, so you can smash it. In Gran Turismo 7 in wet conditions. Now for me, driving in the wet is the true test of being a racing driver. If you can smash it in the wet, you'll find the dry is so much easier. I really, really, really do believe that. So if you want to improve the driver in Gran Turismo 7, first drive with faster drivers, and second drive in the wet. Now you can see here in the Master RX Vision Group 3 car, not the easiest car to drive. I've got zero assists on this, no traction control, no counter steer. Um, the only thing we've got is ABS on default, which is standard way to drive in Gran Turismo 7. And I'm going to tell you my tips. So firstly, you can see here, look at my gears. I am very, very, very rarely revving out in my gears. I don't want to have any unexpected wheel spin. Nice bit of off-roading there. I don't want to have any unexpected wheel spin. Now in the wet, you need to be on the limit. You need to be on the limit of the available grip. But you don't want to add too many variables in that. So if you're already on the limit of grip and you get a bit of wheel spin, then that's going to push you over the edge and you'll spin out. So in this race, if you have a look at my driving style, I'm really trying to minimise my inputs, trying to minimise the amount I'm revving out in the gears, but I'm trying to maximise how late I can break, I'm trying to maximise how much speed I can carry through the corners. Whereas in the dry, I'd be trying to maximise everything, revs, um, being on the limit, having the back and come round, but here I need to control the things I can control, and then kind of maximise how I'm going to carry speed through. It's quite similar to skiing. In skiing, there's only so much speed you can carry through when you're carving through the snow, or the powder. And it's very similar with driving a car in the wet, especially in karting in real life on slick tyres. There's a limited amount of grip available, and when you're in that grip, it's absolutely fantastic. But as soon as you go out of that window, it's very, very, very bad news. So that's tip number one, is to control the variables, stick in the higher gears, don't get that wheel spin. Now, the other thing about driving in the wet is you have to brake a lot later than you think. And there is more available grip than you think. And I think part of the reason why people worry about the grip available in the wet is that you have a lot of moments in low speed acceleration zones. So coming out of corners, that's where you really feel the back end moving about and you think, oh my gosh, there's really no grip on this track. Now that is a bit of a red herring. Now you can see here, right, there we go. So low speed corner, we've got the power down and we just lost the back end and we oversteered and I think we almost hit the barrier, just clipped it. Now, that is not representative of how much grip there's going to be on this track at high speed. In that corner there, we were laying down the power, too much torque, the rear wheels delivering too much um, power through the axle and we spun around. Now that is not going to be the case through high speed corners. We're not going to be getting that wheel spin. So we've got to have the faith in the high speed corners. If we're going to approach the high speed corners like low speed corners, we're going to lose way too much time. You can see in this race here, we're trying to car through the pack. And this is a low speed corner, got to be a little bit aware. We're going to get into this part of the Nulch Life, which is a track that I have driven in real life actually, although not in the wet, I've driven it in the dry. And you're going to see we're going to have the commitment to carry that speed through. And that is one of the biggest differences between people who are fast in the wet and people who are slow in the wet. People who are fast in the wet carry so much speed through um, the medium and high speed corners. So we're about to get onto that section of the uh, North Life now. Just being quiet so you can hear how I'm going through the gears. Look at my throttle inputs as well. So we're half throttle, moving on up to full throttle, but again, very progressive with that throttle, progressive. Lower, th lower half, two thirds, two thirds, two thirds. Now full throttle. So let's see how we do through this bit. You can see here, 120 miles an hour. Hopefully we're going to really catch the cars ahead because we're going to have that faith. You can see here, still over 100 miles an hour. Some very, very, very fast corners coming up uh, before we get into the carousel. This bit, you know, flat out in a lot of cars. And again, 120, still keeping that speed. We're not afraid of spinning out. Still keeping that speed. We're really catching up now. You can see the car feels a lot more stable at high speeds. Got more downforce acting. Uh, we're in high gears. Less chance of the tyre spinning up. 
So the car is safer at high speed in the wet. It's a bit of a paradox. But that's how it is. Now we're going to go into the carousel section. And this bit is very, very twisty and fiddly. You can see the Ford GTs there and myself losing the back end. The camber's a bit weird there. And uh, <laughs> that's the thing about the wet. It's, it's difficult at low speeds, but you've got to have the faith. Right, going all into the swamp now. Don't recommend doing that in real life. You will bottom out the car. And still following these four GTs. So we did we did make up a lot of speed there. Here's a Mazda RX Vision. We're going to go side by side. Side by side with this Mazda. You can see him kicking up a lot of um, water there. I think he still might be there or thereabouts. I think we probably cleared him now. Right, this part of the Norse life is, for me, the most technical part. It feels a bit that's most like a racetrack. And again here, what we've got to do is be confident to have that cornering grip and hit our apexes. It's another thing that drivers make a lot of mistakes of in the wet. They don't carry that speed through the corners. And because they're so sensitive, tentative, getting on the power, they miss a lot of apexes. In the wet, you've got to use your throttle to steer. So you have to be confident putting down that power and getting the back end moving around a little bit. Within the parameters of control, like I talked about, you don't want to have that wheel spin, but you do want to tease it. And if you're not comfortable driving with a thrust in the wet, again, you're going to lose so much time. And in karting and slick tyres, direct drive karts, the karts that I drive with, with um, the likes of Jimmy Broadbent, Super GT, those karts you steer exclusively with the throttle. Now we're going to see in this bit here, this twisty bit, I really enjoyed this part of the big ring. Hopefully we're going to make quite a bit of ground as we're, you can see here, really using that back end of the car to rotate. We're a lot more confident now. We've gone through most of the track. That's really starts to turn to night time now. And we're going to try and bring it all together. So we're going to try and carry speed through the high speed corners. We're going to try and uh, minimise that wheel spin. And we're going to try and really use the throttle to help rotate the car, get it pointed in the right direction, and then lay down that power. Some things that are exclusive to Gran Turismo 7, you do get puddles. You can see on the left there, when that bar goes into the blue, for me, that's it signalling that there's going to be some aquaplaning. So be aware that if you're going over puddles, you may aquaplane. You can see there a lot of commitment to carry that speed. We could have carried so much more speed through that corner. And that's a great example of how much grip there can be available in the wet. I'm not really looking at the indicator in the bottom left, by the way, when I'm driving. I'm more sensing and I, visually you can see in Gran Turismo where the puddles are, which is absolutely great. So we've managed to, to get ourselves into P1 over 20 cars before we get onto the Dottinger. And we'll see how we are laying down the power here, because if you do this in intermediate tyres or if you've been caught out and you're on racing tyres, this is absolutely treacherous to straight on dry tyres. So let's see how we do. Laying down that power and yeah, there's loads of grip available. We're not doing any aquaplaning at all. No side to side, but look at this Ford GT behind us. If you look at the uh, Delta on the top there, there he is. Wow, that Ford GT is absolutely powering through. Fair play, sir. And we want to get this win now, don't we? I know this is how to drive in the web, but really, chat, we, we want to get this win. We want to get this absolute dub. We've got to be brave. Whoa, huge moment. A little bit on the grass. We've got to keep it pinned if we want to get this up the inside. There we go. Breaking late. Now all we've got to do is not outbreak ourselves in the last corner. But, oh no, we, you see we're on full break and we just get straight off the track. Absolute disaster. We're still in first place. No, we're not anymore. Second place, third place. Oh dear, it's all gone from bad to worse. And we're just going to try and lay it down. And here's my mistake. You see there, for the first time I think possibly in the race, we hit kind of that point in the ref band where we were just spinning up the tyres. And you saw we span, so... That is something you really want to avoid. So I hope it was really helpful for you to see this race. Do free to subscribe to this channel if you want to see more tips and tricks for racing generally. Grand Turismo 7, I race and karting. It's been great to have you for this video. Break my voice broke there. I got a bit of emotional. I'll see you next time.